This chapter is about uh, Voronoi diagrams. So first of all, let's see what is a Voronoi diagram, see some terms related to it. And then at the intermediate part of this chapter, we will be focusing on uh, the algorithms which are used to define the Voronoi diagrams. So here you see, for instance, an example of a Voronoi diagram. We have many cells, so you can assume these uh, red ones are, are as a cell. Let me switch to blue. So I can say that this is an example of a cell. Another cell here. And we need to have some kind of actually generators to obtain these cells. And they will be named as sites. For instance, they're not exactly at the center, but if you have a regular pattern, then these sides will exactly be at the center. But like in this one here, it may not be at the center, but they are the ones, they are the points actually used to generate these Voronoi cells. The one here. And we will look, try to learn how we're gonna draw such Voronoi diagrams manually and with the help of a computational algorithm. So this will be the main uh, discussion in this chapter. Another example, this is a continuous uh, United, Ma uh, United States. Uh, you see different states here and they use the capitals of the, each state as the Voronoi site. We will in a moment see that these are called as sites, Voronoi sites. And you see sometimes uh, it's exactly representing the state, and sometimes it may not be representing the exact state. For instance, if you look at here, even though their capital is around here, this is the state. But this Voronoi cell is actually covering other states as well. So this is not uh, just an example. Here you see, for instance, uh, Illinois, Indiana, and they are somehow uh, similar to their maps but not exactly since they were not uh, constructed or established as Voronoi cells initially. And these days people are also using in, uh, these cells and the architecture. They are using such Voronoi diagram as a facha of uh, architects. As you see some buildings, they have such kind of uh, faces. Another example, these are all Voronoi cells. We also have uh, some examples in nature, as you see in these hunting and in animals, in uh, wings of some animals, as you see here, insects. We always have such Voronoi diagrams. They are all Voronoi. On the leaves, on even on the mud, you can see that. We have again some kind of Voronoi sites here. And they're all kind of sets, Voronoi sets. And the whole thing is the Voronoi diagram. So as I look at the formal definitions, I mentioned about uh, a diagram. Now I will quickly draw you a Voronoi diagram here, just composed of, let's say, this many number of Voronoi sites. Okay, and I may have another one here. That might be like this. Obviously not uh, correct, but assume that this is a Voronoi diagram and these dots are the sites. And it's the defining object for the Voronoi diagram. We also, uh, we will see that it's somehow related to a kind of a special triangulation, the only triangulation, but we prefer to use a Voronoi site term or generator source or Voronoi point. They are all referring to these points which are responsible for generating the cells in the Voronoi diagram. So these parts are all called as cells. And it's a set of points for which a single side is closest. In, a, in the next slides, I think I will show you the mathematical definition. But right now you can think about that any points in the cell 
it to be has a distance which is smaller to this one side than its distance to other sides. For instance, if you think about this point here, its distance to the cell it belongs to is smaller than its distance to the other sides around. So this is the main definition of the Voronoi diagrams. And the whole thing, the whole set, which is composed of vertices of the Voronoi diagram, the edges of the Voronoi diagram, all uh, named as Voronoi diagram. So it's the set of all Voronoi cells. Sometimes we use different terms, TSN diagram, Venus size diagram, volume transfer, that tessellation, but mostly we will be using the term Voronoi diagram. So these are some uh, basic uh, things. How we do, how we calculate the distance between any points, we compute the Euclidean distance. So if that's the point, you can simply determine if this is P and Q, take the differences between X and Y coordinates, X coordinates, take the square of it, sum with the difference in the Y coordinates, and again, the square of it. And if you take the square root of all the summation, you will obtain this distance between the two points. And in the plane, we will have some n number of points, n number of sides, and they are represented with a capital letter P. It is actually representing the set of points, set of distinct sides on this plane. So now we have a formal definition of the Voronoi diagram. As you see, it's not that complicated. We define the Voronoi diagram of P. Uh, if you remember in the previous slide, we said that P is a set of dist distinct Voronoi sides, distinct Voronoi points on the plane. These black ones are the points and the Voronoi diagram is the subdivision of the plane. So we have 2D plane and we are dividing this uh, plane into some cells and as you see we have n number of cells which is equal to the uh, points we have on the plane so which means that for each point for each uh, let's say world on each side we will have an cell some of the cells as you see are unbounded they are going to infinity but some might have uh, limited regions so they, are, they are bonded as you see and the thing is that the property is that a point Q, uh, let's write a point, uh, assume that this is Q, assume that this is PI, okay? A point Q lies in the cell corresponding to a side PI, okay? This is PI and this is the cell which is corresponding to this uh, side PI. And it only resides inside the cell if and only if the distance of this point Q, which is here, this is the distance of this distance, if and only if this distance is smaller than the distance of this point to other Voronoi sides. And as you see, oops, this is not uh, okay, but this one is much better. We can say that this is satisfied. If that is satisfied, then I can say that the point here Q is inside that Voronoi side, which is belonging to the Voronoi side PI. This is actually a formal definition. And it should be valid for any uh, PJ. In other, these are PJs, are, this is one of PJs. Pj plus one, let's say this is Pj plus two, and the thing is that obviously J shouldn't be equal to I. So if you satisfy, if the point satisfy this requirement, then we can say that this point Q is lying in that cell which is corresponding to the site Pi. So this is the fundamental of uh, Voronoi diagrams. Any questions, guys, about it? Uh, teachers, uh, the distance between Q and pi, like the, this two different distances can be equal? 
if they are if it's on the edge then they may be equal this is the only case it may be equal for instance think about here we'll discuss it if this is q it will have an exact distance to pj and pi and even on this point on this corner uh, let's say vertex the distance of this point will be equal to this distance to three Voronoi size and that will actually make a kind of a circle. We will talk about these issues in the upcoming slides. We will make use of these properties to determine to compute the whole Voronoi diagram. So the Voronoi diagram is represented simply as Vor of P. And we now know that the Voronoi diagram is a connected graph all the vertices all the edges this is an edge a vertex they are all connected to each other and the cell for a specific if this is pi then the cell here is represents as v of pi but the whole Voronoi diagram is represents as vor of p now let's discuss some other basic properties, how we define the regions. So now you'll see a kind of a Voronoi diagram. We have how many, we have five Voronoi sides and we have some regions. This is the whole Voronoi diagram. This is, let's say, Vor of P. And this part is V of Q. This is the cell. And this part is, represents as V of P. Now, how we de define these regions? We can do it by actually taking the intersections of half planes as we have done in the linear programming. So how we do it? First, we need to define the half planes. How we can uh, determine the half planes? We can simply do it by obtaining the bisector of P and Q, which is defined as the perpendicular bisector of the line segment. This is the line segment between P and Q. If you have this one, then you will determine the center point of this middle point of this line segment between P and Q, and then draw a perpendicular line to this bisector at that middle point. And that will be actually dividing the region between P and Q into two half planes. And if you are on the Q side, then that will be the valid region. If you are on the P side, if you are trying to compute the uh, V of P, then you should be considering this region. But if you are, if your aim is to compute the V of Q, then you should consider the right hand side. So this part actually, uh, this side is represented as, let's say, H, P of P and Q. So this is a half plane between P, P and Q, but we are referring to the side which contains P. And if you want to refer to the side containing Q, then you should define this half plane as H, Q and P. The first letter, the first point will be uh, the one actually we want to define. Any questions guys on this fundamental things? So we can simply say that then this is an observation. If you sum up, somehow compute all these half planes, let's say for, I think this was Q, right? Q and P. If you find all these half planes for Q, then what you can do, you can simply take the intersection of these half planes and obtain V of uh, Q or V of any Voronoi site. This is the first observation we can have in this uh, Voronoi chapter. And obviously, this is a intersection of n minus one half plane. Since we have n a number of sides, and we can have at most n one n minus one half planes. And sometimes we may have uh, unbounded regions, and if that's the case, it will be uh, bounded by at most n minus one vertices and and minus one edges. 
Now we have uh, a theorem about the Voronoi diagram. This is a very degenerate case. The thing is that, uh, oops, I'm sorry, guys. Okay. So you see now we have some collinear points, right? These are the Voronoi size and they are on the same line. So if you have n number of size on the plane, and if all these size are collinear, then your resulting Voronoi diagram will be consisting of n minus one parallel lines. So we have four uh, size, as you see, we have four minus one, three parallel lines, and all these cells are uh, unbounded. We don't have a closed region for any of the cells. They are all unbounded. And you see we have a special case. If all the Voronoi size on the same line, if they are all collinear, we can say that the resulting Voronoi diagram will be consist consisting of just parallel lines. We're not going to have any vertex on the resulting Voronoi diagram. But if they are not collinear, Assume that we have another one here, a fifth one, then we will have such an Voronoi diagram. And you see that obviously we are, going, we are going to have an intersection of this uh, line with other lines. So we will not have just parallel lines defining the Voronoi diagram. In addition to that, you have an extra line and some vertices. But for other cases, we always have such uh, nice looking Voronoi diagrams having many edges, closed regions, and some uh, vertices. And these are called as half lines, since they are going to uh, infinity in that direction, but they are bounded in the opposite direction. They're all half lines. Any questions? How we determine the points? Which points do you mean, Harun? The, the black ones do you mean? These are given. These are the inputs to this function. They are provided. You don't need to determine them, but we will need to determine uh, oops the points, the vertices here. And the black ones are given as inputs. Uh, and with the help of them, we will calculate the Voronoi diagram. These are the only inputs. So set of points, set of uh, size are, uh, is the only input for the Voronoi computation. So we have another theorem. If you have uh, more than, let's say, three size, uh, then the number of vertices in this formula diagram uh, will be at most 2n minus 5. And we can at most have 3n minus 6 number of edges. I'm not going to do the derivation, but as far as memory should be on the uh, textbook about computational geometry, you can have a look at it. But we can we will take that as granted and say that the number of edges and the number of vertices are all depending on the number of sides. So it's an, there's a relation of linear relation between the number of these black dots, which are sides, and the vertices, and lastly between the edges. And the theorem: if you have an Voronoi diagram V of p of set of points p, it should hold the following properties. And these are highly important. Please make sure that you understand these properties since we will make use of them in the computation of the Voronoi diagram. So let's have a look at them one by one. A point Q, this is our point Q, is a vertex of Voronoi diagram. Assume that this is here. If it's going to be the vertex of the Voronoi diagram, then that means this is only possible if and only if its largest empty circle. What is that? This is the largest empty circle. This circle is CP of Q, okay? 
or this one here, this is the largest empty circle of Q. If that circle contains at least three or more sides on the boundary, then I can say that that point Q will be the vertex in my resulting Voronoi diagram. So this is the only possibility if you are going to have a vertex on the Voronoi diagram. The, that point should have at least uh, three Voronoi sides on its largest empty circle. And another, uh, do you have questions guys, by the way, for the first one, for the first property? Now I will focus on the second property. It says that the bisector between the size PI and PJ defines an edge of Voronoi diagram. So this is the bisectors, assume that this is the bisectors of uh, PI and PJ, okay? This bisector can only define an edge of the resulting Voronoi diagram if and only if there is a point Q on this bisector, actually, which contains, this is, uh, let me name it as Q. It contains a kind of a circle, uh, but it will only contain PI and PJ. And this is valid here. We have such a circle. And the center of this circle on the bisector, and it only contains PI on the two, two Voronoi sides. Yes, this is valid. If it's valid, then we can say that this line segment, this bisector between PI and PJ is defining some part of the Voronoi diagram. Not completely, obviously, but some part of it, this part is defining an edge of the Voronoi diagram. 